Lesson six practice problems for number one, we've got on the grid, draw a scaled copy of polygon Q using a scale factor of two. Compare the perimeter and area of the new polygon to those of Q. All right, so let's just go ahead and get to business here. Let's, let's just start scaling it. So everything's being multiplied by two. So uh, every corresponding side is gonna be double what it was before. So I'm gonna start it right here we do the bottom of it now that is three so that becomes six one two three four five six right there all right that becomes two because it was one right there all right this is one two three four so that's going to become eight there's four all right and then there's another four one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Let's see that. And then right here, that's two, so that's going to become double. That's going to become four. Become four. Now I'm going to do this one. I'm going to go over here. That's two. That's also going to become four. Okay. This is one. That becomes two. So as the part that goes up, that becomes two. And then I didn't have to, I didn't feel like counting this out. So that's gotta be it, but I'm gonna count it now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12. So the, um, the other one should have been six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six units across. There we go. All right, now the perimeter of this, one plus one is two, two plus two is uh, four, four plus three is seven, seven plus one is eight, eight plus four is 12, 12 plus two is um, 14, and then 14 plus six is 20. So the perimeter of the smaller one, P for perimeter, is 20 units. All right, now it's also asking us to look at the area. So let's figure out the area. Now, the area is literally area is just number of square units that are in it. Now, this is an irregular shape. So, I mean, we could kind of break it up, but we could literally just count. If you're looking for area, you can just literally count the squares, you know, because that will be the area, square units, you know, the, the literal number of squares is going to be the area. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. So there's your area. So area is sixteen square units. And then we always write area in square units. Okay? Units squared. Now uh, it doesn't say centimeters or inches, so we'll just go with units. All right. Um, so compare the perimeter and area. Now, uh, if you know, if if we're not too sure about this, maybe we assume too much. You might think, well, yeah, perimeter and the area is going to double. All right. Now, one of those statements is true, but not both. Not both. So if we, if we add it all up, all right, I've got, I'm just going to highlight these things as I go along. Um, 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. 12 plus 8 is 20. All right, 20 plus 4 is 24. 24 plus 12 is 36. 36 plus 2 is 38. 30 plus 2 is 40. All right, so the perimeter of that one certainly did double. Okay, that one definitely doubled. All right, now is um, is the area double? You know, so if it's double, then it should be 32, right? It should be 32. And I'm gonna, instead of counting every single one, I'm gonna kind of make this a little easier. Here, we could do this. Let me kind of break this up. Right here, this is, that's, eight by four, there's 32 boxes in there. All right, I'm just gonna kind of break it up. 
little bit. This is one, two, three, four, five, six by four. So there's 24 boxes in there, 24 squares. And right here, there's eight squares in there. All right, so yeah, we're definitely over 32. 16 times two is 32. All right, so when we add all that up, 32 plus 24, you get 56. And then 56 plus eight is 64. So what's the, the perimeter? Now the perimeter, the perimeter doubled, right? Because it, the, the perimeter is going to do whatever the scale factor does. Scale factor is three, the perimeter is going to be three times more. The scale factor is four, the perimeter is going to be four times more. That's the way perimeter works. Perimeter is kind of this one-to-one -one relationship with scale. Area, not so much, right? Area definitely does not work. Now the thing that you might want to notice here about 16 is that um, 64 is 16 times 4. 16 times 4 is 64. 64. But the thing that you have to do is you have to take your scale factor. SF. So the scale factor was 2. And if you want to figure out the scaled area, square it. And that's how many times greater the area will be. So that's four. So for instance, if, if the scale factor was three, that means the area is going to be three squared or nine times greater. Right? If the scale factor was four, right? Four, um, you know, multiply by four, then the area, I'm talking about area only here, I'm not talking about perimeter. The area is going to be 4 times 2, or 16 times greater. So you can see it kind of, it definitely changes by a lot. You know, squares, not just, it's not just, you know, in this particular example, it was 4 times greater because um, the scale factor was 2, and 2 squared is 4. All right, for number 2, it says a right triangle has an area of 36 units. If you draw scaled copies of this triangle using scale factors in the table, <coughs> what will the areas of these scaled copies be? Explain or show your reasoning. All right, so you got a right triangle with an area of 36. And so the way that this, like I just said, um, the area is not going to be the same. It's not going to, you know, whatever the scale factor, we're not going to just do times 2 or times 3 or times 5. We're not going to do that. We're going to do, we're going to square those numbers. We're going to square it. So we're going to do two squared. So two squared uh, is four. All right. So it is uh, four times greater. So just do 36 times four. And you get 144. So it's 144 square units. All right. Uh, now this one's going to be three squared, which is nine. So the area is going to be nine times greater. So I'm going to do 36 times nine. Six times nine is 54. Carry the five, and then three times nine is 27 plus three is 32. So that's going to be 324 square units. Alright, keep going here. Five times greater. Scale factor is five times greater. That means it's going to be five squared, which is 25 times greater. So we're going to do 36 times 25. So that's going to be 30, carry the 3, and 18. We put a 0 right here. Uh, put a 2, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So you got 0. This you got 900. So you can see the area, you know, when you, when you have these scale factors that are greater than one, you can see the area is, changes by a lot. You know, it's not just doubling and tripling, it's, it's squaring. You know, it's, it's an exponential change. 
kind of a big word there, but it's changing by an exponent of two. All right, now this one right here, we're gonna just gonna multiply uh, one half, we're gonna, you know, times itself. Um, that's just one half times one half, and that's one fourth. So we're gonna do one fourth. Now, that means the area is gonna be one fourth of what it was before. So you're gonna do one fourth times 36, which is nine. which makes sense because it got smaller. All right, uh, same thing for this one. We're gonna do two thirds squared. So two thirds squared means two thirds times two thirds, which is four ninths. So we do four ninths times 36. And um, four times 36 is 144. You, know, you can just multiply left to right, and then 9 times 1 is 9. All right, and then if we just divide 144. 144 divides by 9 evenly. So 9 goes into 14 once, and it goes into 54 uh, six times. So there's your area, 16. So 16 square units. It's good to keep in mind here, though, that this is something that happens with area, not perimeter. Perimeter, it would just be, you know, times 1, times 2, times 3, times 5. But since it's area, it has a squaring effect. So we take this, we take this scale factor and we square it. That's how many times greater the area is going to be, all right? All right, for number three, it says, Diego drew a scaled version of polygon P and labeled it Q. Uh, if the area of polygon P is 72 square units, what scale factor did Diego use to go from P to Q? All right, so what we can do here is, so you do a scales copy of version P and labeled it Q. Now this, the area of polygon P is 72. All right, that's kind of an irregular shape here. So I am going to, um, like we get, that's, that's a square unit, that's a square unit, that's a square unit. This right here is half. Right, that's half, um, and right here, that's one whole. So we got four and a half, right? Okay, I was just checking something out. I kind of paused the video for a moment just to check something out. Now this is definitely four and a half, all right? So the area of this is four and a half square units. And then if I compare that to 72, so the scale, so 72, and if I divide that by four and a half, 72 divided by four and a half, you get 16 exactly. You get 16 exactly. So um, it's 16 times um, uh, well, the, the, the original one was 16 times bigger, it was 16 times bigger. Um, but, uh, now, if it's 16 times bigger, though, I'm looking for, like, what number, what number times itself equals 16? Well, you know, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, you know, three squared is nine, four squared is 16. So um, I would say the scale factor, um, well, to make six, yeah, it would have to be four squared, but it got smaller, so it was, it's probably one fourth. 
It's one fourth. That's a tricky one. That's not the easiest one to do. But that's definitely one fourth of what it was before. Or a scale factor wise. The scale factor uh, was one to four. All right, for number two, or for number four, it says here is an unlabeled polygon along with its scaled copies, A through D. For each copy, determine the scale factor and explain how you know. So for this one, um, all right, now for this one, uh, the thing that pops out at me is this part right here, that's two. That's the only thing that's kind of definite. I mean, the, all the other ones are kind of diagonal, so it kind of at angles, and we, if we have to look at those, we can. But that's two. So um, on A, this is one. So that's a scale factor of one half right there. All right, for B, for B, this got bigger. So that's, it was two and now it's four. So that's a scale factor of times two. All right, for C, that's a three right there. That's a three and it started out as a two. Now I know that's kind of weird, but um, that's a scale factor of three halves, three over two or one and a half if you want to do that. All right, and then D was unchanged. This is two, just like it was before, and so that's got a scale factor of one, unchanged totally. All right, for number five, solve each equation mentally. All right, so you got one seventh times what is one? All right, well, one thing that we've discussed previously was like if you multiply by a unit fraction, it's like dividing by the de denominator, right? It's like dividing by seven. So what number divided by seven is one? Well, what number divided by anything is one itself, right? So X has got to be seven. X has got to be seven. All right. Uh, right here, we've got X times one eleventh equals one. And so x has got to be 11. Because 11, you know, times 1 11th is like 11 divided by 11. All right, and then we've got 1 divided by 1 fifth. 1 divided by 1 fifth is x. All right, so we've got to figure out what that is. Now, it's, you might assume, like, oh, it's 1 fifth, right? Because dividing by 1. But we're not dividing by 1. We're doing 1 divided by 1 fifth. You know, if it was dividing by one, that's a different thing. But we're doing, you know, division doesn't work both ways. You can't change the order and still get the same thing. So for, for that, um, it's going to be five. 